Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's everybody? Happy Wednesday. Wednesday, sometimes considered hump day. Can you believe that it is already November the 3rd? November the 3rd. Hope everybody um, went to vote on yesterday. Yesterday was election day. Um, we want to congratulate the mayor elect, Eric Adams. Um, a little disappointed as to what happened there in Virginia. But um, I hope that and as much as the Republicans won, that maybe they will not continue to foster this whole idea of um, the fact that there was fraud in the last election. Um, because a fair election and for things to be counted properly is the core of our democracy and it is good for everybody, whether you're Republican or Democrat, you just need to make sure that if you win, you win, if you lose, you lose. And that's just the American way, and it is the right way. Anyway, thank you so much for um, being on today. Um, I want you to remember that tonight is World Day of Prayer, so please join us for our World Day of Prayer. The whole world is in convulsion in a perilous time. We're in the midst of a global pandemic. There are financial challenges that are facing world markets all over the place. Um, there are distribution issues in terms of getting goods and services to people. Um, there's just so much to be done. But we know that our God has the whole world in his hands. So please consider joining us tonight. Um, the prompts for World Day of Prayer is the same as our Bible study. And then next week, of course, we will get back to our regular Bible study. Also, please join us on Sunday for worship as we come to praise and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the afternoon at two o'clock, the ushers will have their annual sermon. I do solicit your prayers. As you know, um, I lost my other father, the Reverend Dr. Melvin Gerton. Those services will be on Sunday. They will have a, mu a, a musical celebrating his life. And on Monday will be the service. Um, I've been invited to preach that service. I solicit your prayers. I need God's strength and your prayers. What a wonderful spirit and model of a pastor um, Dr. Gurdon was, and what a wonderful surrogate father he was to me, as he was to so many people. So um, pray for me. I'll be leaving immediately after the usher's annual sermon to go to um, Indianapolis. Then let's pray for one another. I ask that you will pray for Sister Carolyn Ford. I um, ask your prayers for Sister Shirley Branch. I ask your prayers for Sister Frances Randolph. And also pray for our meeting. We have a board meeting on tomorrow at 7 o'clock. I hope that our board members will be here as I will give a state of the church as it relates to where we are at this moment. All right. Thank you so much. Um, oh, also remember to meet us uh, on Saturday in the park as we will have our Walk for Christ, Salem on the Move. We canceled last week because of inclement weather. We will do our walk run this week. We're asking $5 a mile. So please um, consider making a contribution if you can. If you don't have $5, hey, just join us anyway. If you can give more, that's fine because the expenses of the church continue as you already know. All right. Um, yesterday I was talking with you out of um, 2 Timothy chapter 3. I think we, we, we pretty much got through chapter three, but I want to continue. Um, and I think where I want to start, which is a bit of a repeat of some of what I did yesterday, I want to start at 2 Timothy chapter three um, at verse 10. And um, we're going to complete this. Um, we're going to do verses 10 through 17. And then on tomorrow, we'll look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. All right, this is Paul's final letter to his son, Timothy, where he gives him instructions and encouragement as to how things ought to go in the church. This letter is written in the first century, somewhere around about 60, 70 AD. But it's amazing that it speaks as pointedly today to us in this time as it did when the apostle wrote it. Yesterday, we certainly got through verses 1 through 9. Let me pick up at verse 10 of 2 Timothy chapter 3. He says, You, however, know all about my teachings, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings. What kinds of things happened to me 
in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. In other words, you know, Timothy, that I have gone through a lot for the cause of the gospel of Jesus the Christ. He says, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. I don't care what you're going through. Our God is able to take care of you. We sang on Sunday, be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you through every day along the way. God will take care of you. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. In other words, he says that, you know, evildoers will pretend to be who they're not. And not only are they bad, but they'll go from bad to worse. And they will deceive you. But in deceiving you, they themselves are also deceived. But, verse 14, as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. Hold on to the teachings of Christ. Hold on to the teachings of the church. Hold on to the teachings of godly parents because this is true and this will endure. And he says to Timothy, you know what you've learned, you know who you learned it from and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through Jesus Christ. Continue to study God's word, knowing that his word will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. It will make you wise. I close now. Understand this, which is why we must study God's word. All scripture, not just some scripture, he says to Timothy, but all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If you're going to teach this word, then you need to study the scripture. You need to know that it's God breathed and that this word is useful. And even if you're not a preacher, but you're just trying to live, you need to know that God's word is useful for teaching, for rebuking when you've done the wrong thing, for correcting and for training in righteousness if you want to do the right thing. And this is not just for the preacher, but it's for all of us so that as God's servants, we may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. For he, Paul writes to the church at Philippi, Philippians chapter one, verse six, for he that's begun a good work in you will perform it even until the day of Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. On tomorrow, we'll look at 2 Timothy chapter four. Let me greet some of you. I'm so glad to see you today, and we're not going to keep you long. Carmen, thank you. I look for you tomorrow. That's my running partner. Mary Lawrence, how are you? Reginald, how are you? Valerie, thank you. Sister Ramsey, how are you? Good to see all of you. Uh, Mary Joseph, praying for you. Thank you, Leroy, how are you? I'm Carmen, as I said already. Good to see so many of you. Brenda, how are you? Sister Marva Harding, how are you? Good, thank you. Joan, how are you? You still here? Monica Stewart, Shirley Millard, thank you. Angela, how are you? Brenda Allen, thank you. Thank all of you for joining us today. Remember to join us tonight for our Bible study, all right? Um, our World Day of Prayer as the whole world is in need of prayer. Um, pray for me, I'm gonna pray for you. And we know, Paul says, in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It may not be good while it's working, but God will work it together for our good. How are you, um, Deacon Newman? Thank you from First Baptist. Thank you for joining in. Good to see you. Are you in Georgia? Okay, Joan, you're in Georgia. Okay, wonderful. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. We thank you for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that gives birth as we yet try to understand it. Pray, oh God, you bless each person under the sound of my voice. You know every need, every concern, every problem that we have. We bring to you uh, Dr. Melvin Gurdon's family, that you will encourage them at this moment, that you make real the words of the psalmist, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come from, that joy will come in the morning and that you will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Pray for those that are sick. Remember the, today, um, Sister Shirley Branch, we remember Sister Carolyn Ford, remember Sister Randolph, those that are sick and send to the church and say, pray for me. We still know you got more healing than Henry Garment than all the hospitals in all the world. Pray for this place called Salem, that we may ever be a light in this community, point men and women and boys and girls to the one who is the light of the world. And now, oh God, we pray that you'll continue to give us strength, help us not to get weary and well-doing, for the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to those who endure to the end. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. I'll look to see you tonight, and I'll look to see you tomorrow. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love and you're going in and you're going out and you're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ to whom be glory, majesty, dominion and power both now and forever.